in Pocono. I was just wondering why this was at nine at night. I was like, it must be because Jay's on the west on the west coast and it's six o'clock. Well, what I was telling what I was telling Sig is that we try to make it like a party. The originally we jumped this off with DJ DUIs, Tanya, and myself as a late night party because we were trying to shake up the podcast world. So we came out with video and we were having parties and mocktails and DJs and we had all these people in the studio and we just talked about it. it originally the show was called um, what the, fuck was the, show? the shit people are talking about. Right? <laughs> and so, but the FCC got to us and bumped us. They said, you can't oh. use that. You can't title it. So then we did it and called it always on. But yeah, it was like a party. We're live on Facebook. Here you go right now. It's time to go. Hey, hey, hey it's time yet. Always on for time today. Everybody here? Anyways, it's not Friday, but it's Thursday. We're doing a special show today. We moved it up just about one day. You know, you can take us. Anyways, you can look at us again tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Hey, are you here? Jay Weiss, good evening. <laughs> so, anyway, we have some special guests with us today. I'm looking for Jay. Was Jay Fall off? Jay Fall off? Jay's off. Yeah, I think he got cut off. All right. Anyways, he'll come back. He'll come back. So we got two special guests with us today. We have Roseanne Santos. Good evening. Buenas noches. We also have Maria Sid. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jay is now back in the house. He's connecting and everything. How was your week, ladies? Good. Long and not over. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> There's right. Jay's back. What's up, Jay? We, we already started. Okay. So, up, sorry, I missed that. I had That's a technical okay. difficulty. <laughs> How you been? I've been dope. I've been dope. I've just been lighting it up, trying to stay out of trouble, you know. Um, the pandemic got me caught out there a little. I mean, not the pandemic, but it's coming down. But I was saying to uh, Maria, it's like everybody is talking about sex and gaining weight. So I've been trying that. I've been saying, what? Say that again? <laughs> the fuck with either one. Trying not to gain more weight and trying to have more sex. You, you heard about that, right? More sex, you won't gain weight? Well, they always said that. Yeah, they yeah. They always said that. You keep your groove on, you lose some pounds. But, you know, Don't burn that many calories. Yes, exactly. And now they're saying uh, you can't you can't gain muscle mass if you have. Uh, I met something. I saw something on YouTube. Uh oh. You know I gotta stand on all these topics just. To uh oh. Keep my. <laughs> well, let's keep get my it. coming. You let's know. get into it. Like said, huh? What'd you say? I said someone said you don't burn that many calories. No, you don't. A hundred and twenty. What? That's what? That's one cocktail. Yeah. And I drink a lot of cocktails, so that means it has to be an all-nighter then, right? You're going to have to take care of that two hours of sex. Wow. <laughs> well, some people can hang like that, you know? They can yeah. do it. Maybe in the young days. Anyways, let's get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, anyways. Yeah. Once we start on that road, it, it, it doesn't come okay, back. Once we get into sex and rock and roll, it's done. No, we're <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Anyways, we, let's introduce our guests. We got Roseanne Santos. Uh, Roseanne, say hello. Hola, and good evening. Yourself. Good evening, everyone. My name is Roseanne Santos. I'm calling from New York City, and I'm really happy to be here tonight with all of you. I'm a bilingual right. keynote speaker, and I hope you get to learn more about me tonight. Oh, yes. And Maria. Yeah. Maria, yep. Yes, well, welcome the to the podcast, and tell us a little bit about you. yourself. I'm in Williamsburg and just observing here to talk about life. Okay. All right. Well, there's a podcast. <laughs> hey, so, so go ahead, Jay. 
No, I was just going to, I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm just saying I'm kind of excited about the Oscars. I just wanted to touch base on that really quick. But what were you going to say? I was going to ask Roseanne what she said to the motivational speaker. How did you get into that? Okay. Uh, oh, wow. So my mom says I've been speaking since I was two and never stopped. <laughs> And so over the years, people have seen me kind of talk about different topics. I've been an adjunct lecturer. And there came a point about six years ago when I needed to think about ways to make some more income. Um, I found myself a single mom. And I was like, OK, we need to enhance the bank account. What am I good at? And so I started monetizing my my keynote speaking. I used to do it for free and for very low amounts of money. And over time, with the help of marketing and training, I've been able to really make some nice uh, extra side hustle money to, to sustain my son and, and to live a, a better life, really. Okay. You teach other people how to have a better life. Yes. Yes, I aim to do that. Yes, absolutely. Do you have a tagline or something like that? Lifting as I climb. Mm. Oh, no. Say it again. Lifting as I climb. Oh, I like that. I like that. It's not, mm. it's not original. It's a historical term, but I like it. And, and it's exactly what I aim to do. OK, OK. What is your greatest moment? I mean, that you, you know, that solidified you of saying, yes, this is this is what I do. And I love doing this. When I got my first ten thousand dollar gig. Yeah, I talk. How can I be a <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. How can I be a motivational speaker? I need to do that. You have to come with a subject. You have to come with um, a mission, and my mission is consistent. Uh, I talk a lot to women. You know, women of color make a beeline to me. It doesn't have to be an audience of women, but. That's who I seem to attract. And, you know, people have started to recognize my value and my ability to be a keynote and to ingratiate myself with an audience. I think people just, I'm very extroverted and social and, you know, and I, just, and I think that's attractive to people. And so people want to hear more. So who am I to argue with the people? Right. One more question. I got one more question for you. Yeah. What was your hardest challenge? Like somebody you you had to bring from the top, from you know, upgrade. What was your hard, hardest challenge? I think the hardest challenge is when I coach women who then try to bring in the relationship stuff. So I really like to do career coaching, but if someone is finding themselves stuck, all the other stuff and all the other baggage comes in. And when you hear about people's relationship stories and how they're in bad situations, I, it's I, what can I do, right? I'm, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a police officer, and I can give all the advice in the world, but if that person doesn't wanna remove themselves from the situation, it, that, that breaks my heart. Mm. It's like, there's not much I can say until they're ready. I wish I had the magic tagline that would help them kind of move forward and out of whatever situation, um, even if it's a toxic job space. But some people have a very hard time getting out of that those kinds of spaces. And I'm, I'm still working on it. I'm trying to get better so that I can help move people out of those spaces. So I have a lot of work to do. Mm, I'm going to call you the upgrade lady. Upgrade. Oh, I like it. Upgrade lady, there you go. <laughs> upgrade your life. It, it sounds fantastic, actually. So can you give us some tips that we can pick up at this moment, like let's say, you know, you look toxic workplace, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the bottom line is you really have to begin to invest in yourself. I, you really, it, you have to just look at what you can control. And if your boss doesn't want to pay for that conference so that you can get a, a certification that's going to help his or her business, then you're just going to have to get it for yourself. And as much as I hate to say it, sometimes you get to a point where you have to share your gifts with a different company or open up your own shop. So, and that's hard for people to hear because they think it's someone else's fault or they can't control their situation. But really what I share with people is you are in control. So what are you going to do? That's right. 
Now listen, you can take the horse to the to his water, but you can't make him drink it, that's for sure. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like it's such a simplistic message, but a lot of people wanna blame or don't wanna like, for example, pay for their own training and things like that. And that's really what we have to do. We kind of have to take the bull by the horns for ourselves and move to that next level because no one's going to do it for us. No way. But you also said um, women make a beeline to you. So do you have to deal with a lot of women who may be um, divorced or having to raise or not now the breadwinners or struggling? I mean, what's that? Because in today's world, right, we're dealing with more empowering women, more women CEOs. Um, everybody has a force field that's, um, it's, it's ch the, the ground's changed a little bit. I like that, a force field. I think that a lot of women who talk to me have been bringing up this concept of imposter syndrome, which makes me cringe. I can't stand it. I hate that someone put that terminology out there um, because I think people found a term and they think that term describes what they're going to. And all it does, it really just puts, it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So mm. anytime someone uses that terminology with me, which has been very often lately, I actually share the research with them um, that created that terminology. And that terminology came out of a study done in the 70s with only white women. Mm. And um, so it doesn't really capture the full population of women in the career space and what it means to be in career space. So I share the data and then I say, there's no such thing as imposter syndrome. You are the real thing. And you just, you're the one who has to recognize it. But that's probably easier said than that. What, Maria, you got something to say? No, I agree. That I sounds agree. like it's easier said than done because a lot of times we have insecurities. Yes. Like, right? Okay. So we don't want to just jump in it and feel like, well, that's me you're talking about or how can I do better, even though you want that information because we're all, always trying to learn up and educate ourselves. I mean, it's all okay to have insecurities. I have insecurities. I look in the mirror and I know what I don't like. Um, but I really believe in having a philosophy of strength over deficit. You know, I'm not focusing on those weaknesses. Yes, I have deficits, but I believe in myself and I believe that my strengths overcome those deficits in many ways. And if I really, really want to work on a deficit, I will. I'll read a book. I'll get a training. I'll meditate. I'll talk to my therapist. You know, there's many ways to get over those, but I'm not going to live by those deficits. No way. It's, I mean, I don't want to eat up all your time, but is this a sign? It sounds, sometimes I hear these conversations and I'm with you. I read more books. I'm trying to figure out what about me, what do I bring to the table as, as Jay, but I know men and women are different. You feel that um, you just... You don't get the truth from people. Like you really gotta dig, or uh, it's hard to get to that core element. No, I think I can. I I think I have a good skill of putting people at ease. I'm very authentic, and I invite people to be the same. I make sure that the space I offer is safe, and everything they stay with me, that stay with me, stays with me. And I use myself as a role model. I'm not perfect. I share. I share photos of my weight loss challenges so they can see if I can do it, you can. I share my failures at work and my successes so they can see failure is just data to get you to that successful place. So I'm not afraid to share where I have had missteps so that they can see. I'm not here talking to you as a guru or as a perfect person. I'm here as a flawed person who's gotten out of that and I want to help you do the same. Love it. Love it. I do too. I love you it. Know, there's so much out there, right? There's, you know, there's work, there's personal. And then the big thing is always date. How the hell do I find, you know, that that person, that soulmate, yeah. that person you can share your heart with? Because it seems like it changes from decade to decade and and, and year to year. Uh, all right, Maria, you're up. Yeah, yeah Maria. Yeah, you, that's you, that's you, you, 
you and everything. <laughs> so, oh my means- gosh, what do you want to talk about? I think I told Jay, I'm everyone's unpaid therapist. So, oh, wow. Like, hold on me. What do you want to talk about? Oh my God, really? So you, uh, so you're a life coach, right? You're a life coach. Okay. How long you been doing it? Like 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm going to back into this. I have three kids, adults, and they're all fully launched. And, you know, as you are moving through your life, you just gain a lot of experience. So parenting, relationships, dating, whatever, whatever you want to talk about, um, life in the city. So I, you know, I just moved into the city from the suburbs. So it's been interesting. Oh, how is that? Do you like it? Is this your first time living in the city, city or? Living in the city since I was a single person in the 80s. So wow. it's vastly different. Yes. Wow. And then of course we just were dealing with COVID. So, um, you know, it's been an interesting experience. Okay. All right. Have you found it challenging? I mean, listen, I went from the city to the burbs in the last <laughs> year, right? And, and I'm like totally cosmopolitan. Do you find it a little more challenging to go from the burbs into the sea? Like, what not challenging, but more exciting? Because you're going to think, oh, man, I can see people I'm here with in the Poconos saying, I just can't wait to go see Music Man or go to Broadway or hang out on 42nd Street or eat a hot dog at papaya. When no, I'm like, you gotta I mean, be out of your mind if I'm gonna eat a hot dog at papaya. So how does it feel for you? Cause you seem pretty chic. So I've been able to come into the city regularly. It's not like I wasn't able to travel. Um, but the minute I divorced, I left the suburbs. I didn't have anything to do there. My kids were gone. So I moved into the city. Um, it's fun and exciting for a single person. If you're looking for a change, that's a major change. You know, it seems like the common theme I hear more and more are uh, single women turning it up. And I, I mean, that's, <laughs> bad, that's bad no, slang because that would be a 98 sound. Why but, not? You know, Once you that? finish parenting, honestly. Right? That is a full-time job. You never get a day off. So the minute your parenting responsibilities wind down, they're they're never completely over, but they were winding down. And why wouldn't I move for something? Uh, hey, I'm moving. applauding you move. Congratulations. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're coming over your house to turn up and everything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there uh, next Friday at your house. Make sure you have all the drinks and everything. We're going to turn up with you, girl. Yeah, so, you know, the friends in the suburbs are just really jealous. They're like, you're doing what? It's like, no, what? Bye, 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 see you. I would have done the same thing. I would have sold the house, the cars, and everything and moved. If I can, I still have young ones myself, so, you know. That's exactly what I did. Sold everything, moved. Ooh, that's nice. I find it really hard. Easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's scary. Like, you got to take that leap. Yeah. And I feel like once you, this is about visualizing too. You have to visualize. You have to see yourself making the move before you can actually do it. So I think it kind of aligns with life coaching. People have to see themselves and be ready to make a change. They I mean, it was kind of like what you were saying, Roseanne. It's like, you you share your experiences. You have to like you 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 turn you you were in a situation with your child, bringing it up. How are you gonna make ends meet? How are you gonna change the world? And you visualize, I guess, your goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, it's, that's called trail trailblazing to me. When you visualize the next trailblazers, we well, saluted trailblazing from the first show we did. And that's been our theme ever since. Yeah. Well, women, what can you say? It, it is Women's History Month still, so kudos to both of you. Three months. Well, I mean, there's a practical aspect to what Maria's talking about. You know, you have to visualize, and and for some, the visualization is that you don't have a choice. It's like I'm kind, I'm suddenly a single parent. I'm suddenly one income household and 
you have to figure that out. <laughs> so it's sometimes it comes to a practical place. Yeah, it's like strapping up your boots. It's it, but you know that shit is hard. <laughs> I mean, look, people can do hard things. How you frame it in your mind, you can do hard things. Yeah, I mean, I did a hard thing. I had a 15 month old kid, baby girl, and my dream was always come and live in New York and work in New York and do my thing, and I did it. Yeah, see. <laughs> Because only only because um, I had uh, a, a gr I have a great family, so if anything were if didn't work out, I know I can go back home. But my I had no fear. I had to do it, get it out, and I'm still here 20 years later. Actually, 20. Years later. <laughs> Everybody just stacking on decades, two decades, three decades. I, I'm not that old. I'm still I'm <laughs> well, still 25. That's, that's one of the things that's I think the hardest for women is we tend to be risk averse and uh -oh. it's hard for us to take risks, especially if we have children. And the second part of that is we're not nurtured to be risk takers. Mm. So we have to combat a lifetime of the way we were nurtured and brought up. That really is not about jumping off the ledge and taking risks and quitting your job quitting your job to be a keynote speaker. What is that? I don't even know how to say that in Spanish. I have to like, I'm going to have to research how I even say that to my mom. You know, wow. you know they, don't, they don't conceptualize, you know, you have to make money. You have to have a real career. And so when you're working with other women, you're coaching other women, you're asking them to take risks, you're combating years of how they were nurtured and i continue right. to say nurtured because it wasn't a bad thing it's just our families taught us what they knew and what they thought was going to be great and then as we get older and more modern and more metropolitan and we see the world change in front of our eyes because of our circumstances we're like wait a minute maybe this is not the only way mm -hmm. and so that's hard it's hard to say to ourselves you know, maybe mom and dad were wrong, you know? Oh yeah, you have to prove yourself. You gotta prove it, prove it to yourself that you can do it. And then yeah. along with that, when you do it, you proved it to your family, you know? Yeah. And you did it. So anyways, let's get into these topics, Jay, you ready? I don't know, man, this conversation sounds a little live to me, but uh, yeah, I could talk Oscars 2424. I just wanted to talk really quick because it is Women's History Month. And these things, I just can't believe how tough it is. And more and more women are doing it. It seems like when you when the guy comes your way, they might be soft. They might be like, you know, this thing is a, this person's a punk. I want to call him punk. I call him soft. Soft, you know, can you or less alpha, to say the least. Wait, can you explain that when you say soft, what does that mean? Because that's sort of in the, per I want to say that's something that people talk about in the dating world. So what is the definition of soft? Uh, uh, punk is a strong word. I would say they're not a punk, but soft, meaning they're, uh, they're not as strong as, I'm going to use me. They're not as strong as my, you know, as, as I am, you know, as far as, um, um, reaching their goals, um, having certain things at certain times as society has put at, you know, put it on us and everything. So I would say just kind of soft, just kind of slow, soft, slow. Yeah. I think for me, the definition is, I don't like to use that word either because people have personalities and they are what they are. Yeah. For me, ambition is important. Right. And there are certain personalities that match up to being ambitious and so if that personality doesn't match up to my ambition then you know maybe there then maybe i have to move on or maybe that's not the right person for me um so for me i think ambition and wanting more and and wanting a, a real true partner and someone someone who, who wants to develop themselves exactly that's really, impo that's really important to me anyway all right, so here it is, here it is, here it is. This is what I would consider soft. So we're dating, okay? And you, you know, sometimes you want the man to do some certain things, you know, you know, pick out a restaurant, whatever. So the person, and the men say about a woman too. All right, babe, let's do something. What do you want to do? I don't know. Anything that you want to do. 
You know, that's soft to me. You know, we need to, Got that's it. just soft. I think there's um the balance. I think sometimes we want chivalry and sometimes we don't. And I think that's the world that we live in, it's hard to kind of get both. Hmm. I don't that's know. The culture we created though. So mm -hmm. pick a lane. And for women, I think it's really hard. There is the conundrum. You want to be a strong feminist, but then you want someone, a man, to be strong and do things. So I think, first of all, men are very confused by this. They don't know. They don't know. I'm going to take doing. that for me and Roseanne. We're both single mothers. We're single parents, right? Yeah. OK, so we're used to doing things on our own. Exactly. Totally. And so when I do go out on dates, somebody's opened the door for me. And I forget, I open the door for myself, you know? Mm -hmm. I have to step back and remember, oh, I'm on a date, let the man do some things, you know? So, mm -hmm. so we're, I think, uh, you know, when you're a single parent, there's a lot of things that you do on your own, so. Yeah. You're not used to it, but I think also it's confusing for men. So the problem is twofold. Men are confused, but also some of them now are soft because, there are so many strong women. I, I want to say even lazy in the dating environment. So, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lazy. Not, not lazy. lazy is a very interesting word because I guarantee you, if you go on any site, anywhere, any person, and you say, tell me something, they might say, well, maybe I'm not as alpha. Or maybe I'm even a little confused or so. Lazy, I think they might say, pump the brakes on that soul sister they because- I only push then, back on that, but I'll tell you why I think that is. Tell us why. Remember yeah, yeah. the Oscars at this point, but go girl. <laughs> I, I think, okay, so I think when you're in, let's say in a dating app and people are just expecting you, okay, let's talk about the proportion of men to women ratio. There's so many men. So let's say there's 10 men and like 20 women. So these 20 women are fighting over these 10 men. So the men have more choice, more dating options. So I'm saying lazy because they don't have to do much. There's just a lot more engagement with the women. So yeah. and the men have a dater, like the, the dating range is just wider. Men can date 30, 40, 50, women not so much. So men, I'm telling you, we created a culture of just soft, lazy men. I when think I agree with you, Maria. We, Women, everyone. Yeah, everyone, everyone. Dating, everyone. dating apps, I'm not gonna lie. It's not, this doesn't translate in real life. If you're out somewhere, it's slightly different. I'm talking about a digital environment where you men have just a lot more options. So yeah. I think I think outside the digital um, audience too, Marie. Yeah, yeah totally. Maria. I mean, I think there's a lot more women than men and there like are. you said there are like, yeah like you said that the you know men get to pick and choose and they become um greedy <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very okay. traditional Ma maximizing. Right. maximizing options but that's yeah. okay i was gonna say jay what say you oh, 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 it say. Sounds, i was gonna try to bring jay uice in this too it sounds traditional because I, I I think out in the world we live in you, you do some of those things you well there is a confusion element no doubt about it like you want to open the door you want to pull out the chair and everybody's and, and you get looked at like you're silly so you feel like you're stepping into a hole but at the same time you know you got to bring everything you have in your repertoire so you're gonna you're gonna try to be you know on point. Um, have a plan because you hear this all the time. Oh, you don't have a plan with the, you know, or you can't make a decision, or you can't pick a restaurant, or you don't know where to buy flowers, or you can't, you know, be Cinderella. Oh, Stevie Cohen's coming in. Good, good, good deal. So, but so men are like, let me do my research, you know? Hey, Steve. What's so, up? 
Yeah, Let me do it. my research. Oh, Steve, we're talking about intimacy. So stand by one second. So let me do my research. Let me see what her buttons are. Let me see how she raps. Let me see what her culture is. Let me see how we can get to her soul and environment. Let me see if she wants to share her heart or we got to go through hearing about her last husband who left her and we got to be a shoulder to lean on. And then we like, okay. Because you hear that a lot of times. Oh, the guy comes and he's whining about his ex. And it's like, no, we don't want to be that. We want to be somebody in between that Superman and you know, you can't compete with your dad, but we want to be somewhere in between where we can bring in some excitement, some enthusiasm and some positive energy into your life. And hopefully that will ignite and then we can kind of get something rolling together. But if it can't click, then, you know, I think don't waste your time and don't lower your standards. Hmm. A lot of people don't like to be alone a lot of people don't like to be alone, so they're going to lower their stands, standards and waste their time. But I think well, we that's going to happen. You're going to, you're, going to, you're, going to flirt with, you're going to flirt with life, of course. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So listen, we got Stevie in the house. Yes, yeah, Steve Cohen. Got through Oscars. You know, Steve is going to bring us into the news. Steve Cohen, known as Papa Cohen, you know, fabulous news director down in San Diego. He's written plenty of books, screenwriter. Um, what else? He just won an award as the best journalist 2020. You go, saw, boy. You go, you know, boy. He's just, you got yeah. Roseanne here, who's a success coach. You got Maria Sig here, who's a relationship coach and influence. Of course, you know, TB, TD, and me. So we're all here. It's been a while, Steve. Happy New Year. Yes, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all of you. Yeah. And, you know, it's been a busy busy news week. You know, the timing's perfect because Gonzaga just lost to Arkansas. Oh, shit. I need to watch March Madness. Oh, what? See, that's no. how soft I am. I don't even What's know what's going on in sports. <laughs> my, my, my brackets were blown early on, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about any of it. You want, you want to talk news? What do you want to talk about? Yeah, I wanted to bring Steve in because despite everything we talk about, there's some major news out there that we really don't have a grasp on. I don't, you know. Right, the, right, right. I'm, you know, speaking of powerful women, we have the, um, the, the SCOTUS hearings, the confirmation hearings of, yeah. you, yeah, know, well, you know. You know, let's, let's start with KBJ. I mean, I yeah. think the, uh, you got you, you want to look at those hearings. I don't know if any, if you all have had a chance. You know, I, this is what I get paid for, so I've got to watch them all. <laughs> So I watch every minute, but I, I don't think there's any question that her competency is just overwhelming as a jurist. This is someone who has fought every day for everything she earned, mm. and is you know the top the top of the game. And you know I think it doesn't matter uh, what Biden said about how he was going to choose her of anybody, man or woman, of any race or color. She was the best person to choose. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just I don't think you can get away from that. But what you see in the hearing room, of course, is the politicalization of the process, right? And so you know it's unfortunate and it's hard to watch because it breaks your heart. You see that the guys are the Republicans, and this is their role, right? They just feel that they have to go after her, you know, and try to prove that she is soft on crime, mm. and she clearly isn't. And then the Democrats, unfortunately, are not, you know, forceful enough to stand by her, except for the fellow from Newark, right? Uh, yeah, um, Cory Booker. Booker. Cory. Booker. Yeah, Booker. And, and Cory's, you know, you all have seen Cory. He's a little over the top. Always. He's a, Never right, stop. Right, time. Yeah. He's, he's just like always up here. He yeah. doesn't know how to be like in the middle. Right. Right. So he's all, he's always, always defending himself further than he needs to. And, and she's in tears because he's saying such beautiful stuff about her today. Oh, and I saw that. Yes, that was beautiful. That? But I, I, I'm not sure it serves America, uh, JJ. That's my problem. I don't well, know, the, what, do you, what do you all think about it? The soundbite that, I mean, I, I saw the book a soundbite, but the soundbite that's really going kind of, I think, just came out recently was, this uh she had to define a woman and and she had to do some pushback with crews and that seemed to really um i think romney jumped in as well as said like you said there's an agenda that has to be laid out of course by both sides of the party but they were thinking that it was the attack might have been 
know, uh, poorly placed at some points. Like there were certain things she just couldn't answer. Well, I, th I think there, I think there are issues that are reasonable to approach in an, in a nomination hearing, and then issues that are not that reasonable. So if you're talking about um, transgender choices, sexual preference choices, um, what's taught in schools like CRT versus ethnic, um, you know, ethnic studies, and you use those as your tools to interrogate a Supreme Court justice, that is questionable because, you know, Supreme Court justices deal with cases and they deal with a body of law. Now, I, you know, I'm a, I've been around a while, so I was there, literally there when Clarence Thomas, when his nomination hearing came up and Joe Biden was there interrogating him. And this is before Anita Hill came in, right? So there's two Clarence Thomas episodes. There's one where he's talking about natural law and who he is as a jurist and constitutional review. And then when Anita Hill comes in, so I'm talking about the first part of that before Anita Hill comes forward. That was a thoughtful constitutional exploration of what Clarence Thomas felt. And of course, the Democrats were out to kill uh, Mr. Thomas, but they still had a line of questioning that dealt with what a Supreme Court justice would deal with. Now, if you juxtapose that with what is happening today, you see that the level of questions are not the same. Right. They're not asking her about the Constitution, natural law, originalism, which are the essence of what a Supreme Court justice uses as their basic theory to understand what they're going to do constitutionally. That's not where they went. And I think that's where Mitt Romney said, oh, you know, we need to stop this. Right. I think they were trying to attack her character. Like... Yes. Yeah. Not and and not deal with the issue at hand. So. Yeah. I, I and I and I would agree that I think that uh, what you call called character assassination has been the nature of all these Supreme Court nominees on both sides of the aisle. Yes. I mean, lest we forget, you know, the get the, the gals that were brought in on the uh, on the Kavanaugh hearing and some of the other. Right. You know. I mean. So they were saying, was that a tougher hearing? That was the Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh hearing tougher than this hearing that's going on now. I, I, I think it's, I think they're different. They're different hearings. I mean, I, I think it's hard to compare them uh, straight up. I think the Kavanaugh hearing was a direct char a character assassination attempt, which failed. This is a character assassination attempt, which will also fail. Neither of them are dealing with the constitutional issues that have to do with whether you you're a good Supreme Court justice or not. So as, so as a news guy, I look at the hearings and say, this is not what America needs. America needs to, to determine what people are on the issues. And that would be a better, it seems to me, that's a better exploration of who a person is rather than the attack on their character. Yeah, Roseanne, you rose your hand. What you got to say? What do you have to say? Well, I think what's on full display for me as a woman of color is the continued proof that a black woman has to be 10 times better than a white man to do the same job. Exactly. And that is what is consistently on display for me as I watch the sound bites, as I watch um, one journalist, I believe his name is Tapper, asking what her LSAT scores were. Right. You know, things of that nature. I never heard anyone ask the LSAT scores of any of the Supreme Court justice mm. nominees. Like, what is that? And so what this continues to bring to the forefront is we have to be better. We have to be 10 times smarter, uh, 10 times, uh, you know, higher status before we are even considered uh, for these types of positions. And it's unfortunate and it's sad. And to um, Mr. Cohen's point, overly politicized to a point that is, I think, harmful to, to our society. Uh, Rosanna, I, I, I think that you want to hope that at some point we become post-racial, right? That, that we're not that anymore, but that we're able to just look at people for what they are as people and the racial components finally dissolve. I, I don't know, I've been around a while. I thought by now we would be there. We're not there. We well, know we're close. We're not there. Well, we're, just, we're, we're closer, right? We're closer. Well, I, I think I think we're closer when it doesn't matter, but when it matters, we're not closer. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the problem. I like that. I like that. See, 
You know, it's it's got to matter when it's when it's important, when it's really damn important. I mean, I, I was thinking about because of the Ukrainian situation about Colin Powell and uh, what he went through in his career. And there was a gentleman who could have definitely been a presidential candidate if he had decided to. But one of the reasons he decided not to, when you read his um, when you meet read his thoughts. It's, it's exactly what Roseanne just said. You know, I could run for president, but what do I have to go through to prove that I should could be president instead of just showing up as a former chief of staff and, and chairman of the Joint Chiefs? You would think that would be enough, but Colin Powell said, you know, it wouldn't have been enough. And I didn't want to go through that scrutiny after I had earned everything else. What What's the point of that, you see? And... and um, I don't know what this, I mean, I, I just think that's just so distressing. It is. It is very distressing. Maria, did you have something you wanted to offer? No, I agree with your point. Colin Powell was very smart and more effective behind the scenes creating policy. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree with that. I, I, Jay, 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 let me, can I move to something else for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I thought I I I'd talk for a second about, about news guy. Wrap it up. I thought I'd, I, I thought I'd, I thought I'd talk about the mayor of New York. You know, the mayor of New York has decided well, to. That is a big. That's grown. In you know, here you go. The, this the, morning. the mayor of New York wakes up and says, "You know, all that back stuff that we were thinking about, that was like crazy." You know, and so now if you're a performer on Broadway or you're 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 an actor. Or, or if you're or an athlete, anybody. right? So now Irving can play, right? Yeah. Right. You go like, all um, right. No, so only home games. Uh, that's right. Only home. So how did you know? Ooh. I just this this confuses me because the psychology of that is interesting. That it, that took the mayor of New York to get everybody to figure out we need to unwrap this, yeah. right? We need to unravel this in a way that. Uh, that's meaning. That's meaningful, so that some of these guys, some of these guys can play. And then I, then I thought uh, I had a flashback to Colin Kaepernick, who was not about vaccine, but was about a guy standing up for what he believed in, and he still can't get. He still can't play. That's terrible. He well, can't. Not, but but you, know, you see what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, there's just something that's off in the way these news cycles are working, and what's and what's going on. So, and I think it's great that the mayor did that, but it was a long time coming, and I think it was discriminatory, frankly. I'm, I, no, the, we, the athletes that didn't get to play, I'm sorry, but they, you know, they were. Listen, we oh. still we still have variants out there, so I'm not, you know, we still have variants. We have what the B two, B A point two, whatever. Right. Delta Cron, whatever they want to right. call it. Thing. That's still out there, so I'm not understanding why they live, they're letting. I don't know. Well, I think the key pushback on the news, I'm in New York City, I'm following all of this. Mm -hmm. I think the key pushback is that it feels as if the elites are getting a pass, but there were many city workers who were fired for not right. getting vaccinated. Right. Did they drop that's, back? That's, well, that's the pushback. That's the, that's the pushback right now. So how do you reconcile that? I think that's going to be really tough to reconcile. For Wait a minute. Here's the, here's the deal. How much does this, uh, what's his name, Irving? What's his right. Name? Yeah, how much does he make? And how much does he bring to the city? That's it's a lot, the, that's it's a lot of money. It's well, we know that. Listen, the mayor didn't even uh, duck that. He said it's about money. We know the Nets are trying to get into the playoffs. There you I go. Mean, it, it's, it's very straightforward, um, his his actions. It's very straightforward. And Broadway, of course. Money. I mean, very straightforward. We, we're rooting for the mayor, but this one was um, right. very clear that but it yeah. was. Not, but I think you have, you have to cut through it, though, and say it's not about the science, it's about the bucks. Right. Right. You really right. do. Right. I mean, you know, you got. You, you, you got to get real with some of this stuff. It's clear that it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, um, <laughs> condolences to Madeline Albright and her family. Oh my God. Well, I mean, you know, again, it's another great story of a woman who goes from being an immigrant, uh, an immigrant in Poland who winds up being Secretary of State. And the first lady. First lady. 
<laughs> exactly. And, and you know, and Bill Clinton gave her the shot. Oh yeah. She was already a UN ambassador, and Bill Clinton brought brought her in. And you know, she had um, wins and losses and losses. Now again, she's Secretary of State. It's Bill Clinton. It's on him what happened when she was there. But she she really won on Slobodan and Milosevic and what the Serbs were doing to try to ethnically cleanse the Muslims, right? So she was able to convince Clinton, you need to get in there and we need to stop this. And she, and she succeeded at that. But in Rwanda, right? Again, African-American, Africa for sure. Right. She could not convince Bill Clinton and the United States of America to take action in what was the massive slaughter, right, in Rwanda. And we knew what was happening. There no excuses. Everybody knew. And we and again, is there a racial divide in foreign policy? Of course there is. There's a racial divide. So right. you, you just can't look at her wins with um, with, with, with what was happening in, in Serbia as it was coming apart, and they were trying to work to wipe out all ethnic Muslims, right? And we won that battle, but we didn't even show up for Rwanda. I mean, I mean just think about that for a second. Yeah. It's not like we, we showed up a little, we didn't show up at all. Oh, exactly. Oh, and, wow. and, you know, you've all seen, you've all seen those, the wonderful movies that have been done about. The yeah, of Rwanda and and it, and how heartbreaking it is, and it's as heartbreaking as Ukraine. And I'm yeah. not comparing any one life being better than another. All I'm saying is that foreign policy has racial components, just like all other policy does in America. And you cannot walk away from that. And Madeleine Albright said that she thought that her greatest failure was the failure to save the Sutsis in Rwanda from a slaughter that occurred because she could not prevail no matter what she did as Secretary of State. Now, you know, I don't think anybody else has said what I just said. No, no I hadn't heard. heard. But I think that's important. You know, I, you, you've got to, you know, there's foreign policy that is strategic about national interest. And, and there's some part of foreign policy that has to do with moral, moralism, basic moral goods, right? And I think America stands for both, but mm -hmm. we have to stand up for all kinds of people, not, not you know, not not just not just not just Europeans. Well, I've been hearing some things, also reading some studies that that's why Ukraine is getting so much coverage because it might be you know more of a white, blue eye, you know. Yeah, I, I, I would say I don't agree with that. I, mean, I, I think the Ukrainian situation is a dagger at the heart of all of us in terms of uh, wanting to save the people of Ukraine and to uh, stop what is, without any question, an international thug. Putin. I think I think everybody's on on that team, but I do, I'm just making the point that I do I do think that American foreign policy can be colorblind. And in Marilyn Albright's case, she admitted it that and was sorry and, and felt uh, that it was her only great error was was, was that uh, in, in her life. So, you know, God bless her and her family. Abs absolutely. And, you know, th this um, continuation in, in, Amer in Women's History Month, which this is, uh, right. that, you, you know, there's not... It's not a, a, a debate anymore about the value of uh, what American women can do or women of color can do to improve everyone's lot and move the country forward towards a, towards some level of progress that we're all after. The problem is that the old issues continue to get in the way. And whether that's a glass ceiling or trying to prove yourself better as a woman than the man that is in the same position, or whether it's a fight for um, equal treatment or pay, those battles are not concluded. Yeah. We're, we're, we not have to all. realize that we are, we're the stewards of the, of the battles of others, and that we, uh, we have to continue to say, uh, let's have an awareness of what this issue is, and then let's fight together. To get sold because the, the problem as a news guy is that you see the same issues over and over and over 
the same arguments repeated, and no one's saying we can fix that. Let's move towards us. Let's what's let's move towards the answer, right? The answers are apparent; they're not mysterious, and that I think that's what bothers you is that it's not as though you have to search for the right way. The right way is right in front of you. You just have to step on the path. So how does the media cover it? Then, then what are the decisions you make when you determine what goes in your A block versus what goes in your, your B block? Well, you know, I, 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 for guys like me, it's really pretty simple. It's, it's just really trying to figure out what it is that the people at home uh, really do need to understand and know uh, regardless of what side of the aisle anybody's on, you know, this this is what we have to present because this is the story. Like here in California, one of our top stories, of course, every day has been the gas gas the gas dollar. Wait a minute, how much is the gas out there? Is it like ten dollars yet? Six twenty five. <laughs> like six twenty five for regular gas. Right. No way. Six twenty five. So you go in, and if you're a truck driver, forget it. If you're just a citizen, and you know. High gas prices are regressive, right? The people who have the least ability to pay aren't the, aren't the guys with the Maseratis and the Benz. It's you know it's regular folks, right? And so um, it was proposed today in the legislature that the governor, by executive order, remove all the California taxes, which would save everybody a buck a dollar a dollar and twenty cents. And the Democrats who own the state said, "Oh no, we we're not going to agree to that because." We, we're we're going we're gonna to hand out $200 a, a car and we'll worry about it later. We have a, we have a, a surplus of over $30 billion in California. That's a B, $30 billion in a rainy day fund. I'm sorry, but most of us think the rainy, the, it's rainy day. Yeah. <laughs> Help us out. So that's hey, well, you know, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson is a blue guy. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, Dr. Wilson here, Willie Wilson here in New York City is a millionaire here, I guess. But he he handed out two hundred thousand dollars free gas here first a couple of days ago. Now he upped it up to a million dollars. He's giving out free gas. You know, I, I what can you say? God bless. I mean, that's but but you want leadership that says. And you know, and and thirteen states have done what we tried to what they tried to do today in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. uh, they've already said we're done with the taxes. Let it go. Yeah, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let it go yeah. until this gets better. Uh, and you know, I, I and Jay to answer your question, those are the kinds of stories that I'm compelled to do, where it's pretty clear that the rug's being pulled out from the common man and woman. That's what I care about. And 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 again, these are issues that are not uh, on one side of the aisle or the other. They're just you know. Nobody should be paying six dollars and twenty-five cents for a gallon of gas on. Because if you do that, you know, and and then this affects everybody on the screen here. You know, you go go into your in your grocery store, and a bag of carrots that used to be a buck and a quarter is now three dollars. How did that happen? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. What happened to that bag of carrots that made them worth right. eight bucks? So Let's not talk about meat. Meat. Don't get a steak. Can't get steaks anymore. You know, I'm a, I like pop tarts. I'm, I'm like a regular guy. So my pop tart used to be ninety nine cents. Now it's two dollars. How did that happen? The same pop tart. You need a break. Yeah, exactly. I'm an old guy. I need a break. <laughs> I gotta go back. To, I gotta go back to work. Thank you. All right. All. Thank you so much. All right, Dave. Thank Let's you. Thank Thank you for the always, news. Always, Always a pleasure, you guys. I love it. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right. Wait, Ladies and gentlemen, I love Steve. He always come back with the news, give us the yeah, insights like and everything. That's my dude right there. The Cohen Report, we call it. The yes, Cohen. that's the Cohen Report. Yeah. Exactly. So listen, before we get out of here, I got one thing. Let's talk about Kylie Jenner and her baby. She renamed her baby Wolf. Is that what it was? Or the baby name Wolf? Which one is it? He was named Wolf. And what now? She hasn't shared his new name. And I guess to be continued. Wolfgang Park. That's the new name. <laughs> well, there, <laughs> she, she, there might have been some instant. I didn't know about this, but until we started looking up the topic, there might have been a little feud between her and somebody else. And yeah. Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, fist to cough or whatever the case may be. I mean, look, somebody already had a kid named Wolf. So what? <laughs> so I uh, mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, whatever. Do you, do you? But it's funny. Listen, when you go to school, you know that kid, all the kids are gonna be like woof, 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 you know? 
<laughs> well, if yeah. you guys remember Eddie Van Halen and Valerie Bertinelli had a child and his name was Wolfgang and they called him Wolfie. So let's say he's the OG. Okay. So okay. Maybe You're this right. girl and Kylie, they're copying them yeah. from the 80s. I like that. Mm -hmm. Naming your children is an extremely sure. personal um, and important uh, choice for the people right. naming their kids. So I never question what people name their kids, you know. I'm not okay. questioning, do, like I said, do you. Just know that if you do some outrageous stuff, things there's repercussions. There, are, there can be consequences, yes. <laughs> and I, if I was a kid, I'd be one of those people. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. Yeah, I mean, okay, maybe groundbreaking with Stormy. That was new, new and different. I like that. I, I do like that. Wolf and Wolfie, that's been done already. It's I do not right. Wolfie's all right, you know, it's okay. But, you know, I definitely would have been calling, I'd be like, Woof, woof, woof. So I'm sure she'll come up with something else, but I, I don't know. Yeah. One of well, the I thought Apple kids was named Apple. Right. She named it uh, Apple. But I agree. It is a personal decision. You Very. Reasons why you name your children what you do. Your grandmother this. They like an apple. Mm -hmm. woof, the way it works. You know. But to stop it and then say, I'm going to drop the name. See, that whole, that whole that whole family is so popular like those decisions don't need to be on you know followed by two million people yeah. so then you have these conversations about it it's like okay this one does not go into the grammy and now we know they can't see the children now they're going to change the child's name or i think one baby i saw was it uh, had a million dollar shoe collection was it cardi's baby somebody Probably so I mean, I you know I do go on IG, but I'm just saying it's like it's entertaining, but it's crazy in the way. It is entertainment. Let me shout out some people um on um who's who's watching us. Thank you very much. We have Monica. And I think you joined in. Sar okay. Sarmento. I hope I said it right, but thank you for stopping uh -huh. by. And we also have Redo Bree. Thank you so much for stopping <laughs> by. <laughs> and we have Tian. Penny or Pinna, thank you for stopping by. And we also have Tarnisha Garcia, and we have uh, Sarah Taylor, Matt Diodato, and Louis, I guess, Nicho. Hello, everybody, and thank you for stopping by. That's our audience. <laughs> That's okay. our audience right now. I claim two of them. Two of them. Are yeah. right. It's like, how you pronounce that last name? But that's I, cool. I know about everybody's name, yeah, last name. Please forgive me. Up left, right, and center, girl. Yeah, right. Oh, right. I'm gonna watch the Oscars before we wrap up. Are you gonna watch the red carpet? Are you gonna watch the Oscars? Or watch Beyonce perform? Billie Eilish? Anything? Did you see any of the movies? Do you care? I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do like the red carpet. I love watching the fashion. I I have to admit, I love the fashion. I always like to see what like the J Lo's of the world are gonna wear. I love that. Um, I don't, and I will turn on for the performances, for the musical performances. I'm not so interested in the actual giving of the awards. I don't know. I'm not a big um, movie goer. I know, blasphemy. But I do enjoy the fashion. You couldn't go to the movie. That's your excuse. COVID. <laughs> COVID. The movies were not that exciting. It, like, yeah, they were. Listen, the Super Bowl commercials weren't exciting, okay? And a lot of these movies, they weren't <laughs> not exciting. I mean, oh, God. I, don't get me started on that, okay? It's hard to excite you empowering women. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get it popping. All right, well, we'll be about to get out of here. Please, Roseanne Santos, give your social media, how people can get in contact with you to upgrade them, you know? Thank you. My my handle on everything, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at R Santos Speaks. I know it's a lot of S's, but R Santos Speaks. Maria Sig, what you got? What you got, Maria? At Maria Sig on Instagram. Okay. All right. All right, some lifestyle coaching or anything like that, call Maria Sig. She got yeah. what you need. <laughs> she got what you need. Listen, Maria, we're coming to your house next Friday. Make sure it's clean and all docked out. 
Oh, it's, no, it's clean. Right. We're going it to looks come there. Looks yeah, it's very, it's very spacious and clean. Okay, We're going to come there with some bottles and everything. Make sure you have yeah. the food. I like to have some quesadillas. That's what I like. Brooklyn uh -huh. is fun. Trust me. <laughs> Wait, but they have some great karaoke bars there too. Yes, yes, yes they do. We should so go. Fun. There's some good ones. What in part there. of Brooklyn are we in? Well, huh? I'm in Williamsburg, so you know it's fun. Yeah, uh, Berg, Okay. Do they okay. call it the Berg? They call it Billy Berg? What do they call it these days? I think they used to, but I, I don't know. I've only been here for like three years, two of which have been during COVID. So. Right Not get, out. get out to that fancy yes. park out there. Yeah. What's yeah. up? It's definitely a fun spot. All right. All right. Well, thank you both for being thank on. You for thank, you. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Bye. Enjoy the thank conversation. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yes, yes. I can't wait for us to get back together again in studio. It's even fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah. even the studio is a little cuckoo. The yeah, we. Cuckoo. And <laughs> I would love to get you guys on my podcast. Too. Oh yeah, definitely. Let us know. We're calling you for that. Okay, well, definitely. We're definitely here. Look, if you want to check okay. us out, we're on across all social media. YouTube, Facebook, IG, everything, TJ, always on. Don't forget it. And everything. Oh, I want to give a special shout out to my, to um, DJ Epps, who's on Series XM. Please, thank you so much, DJ Epps, for shouting us out and everything. I appreciate you. No doubt. Anyways, I'm out. Good night. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> we have music up, Juice. Let's get out of here. Bye. 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 Happy Friday, y'all. Have a good weekend. Cheers. Great evening. Thank you. See you, Ra. See you in the queues. Bye. Have a good well. Bye, y'all. <laughs>